Good morning, good morning, good morning. Today we got a lot to chop up. Tomorrow at 5 p.m., we're going to have the extended version play of the webinar for the corporate papers. You want to be there so you can ask questions and be present and get the good sauce, as they say on the internet, the good game, the good sauce, because what we're going to talk about is we're going to go into the third week of training and then we're going to go into the passive income program, which I will probably go into a little bit here, but you want to go below, get in, and I want to dispel some comments. You know, I had someone leave a comment, $5,000 is ridiculous for an online course. And then this person who's intellectually deficient, and I'm going to tell you why, compared my $5,000 course, which really isn't 5,000, to a semester in college. To get a college degree at the cheapest university is going to be twenty-five dollars to $30,000 over a period of four years. With no guarantee of getting a job, no guarantee of success. You spend $2,500 with me and you do the work in two to five years, you're going to have a business that makes you $250,000 a year guaranteed. Let me say that again. You can spend $2,500 right now with me in two to five years in the future, you will have a business that makes $250,000 a year or more guaranteed. What's the better deal? $30,000 for a college degree that takes you four to five years to get or $2,500 for the corporate papers that'll literally take you a year to do. You know, I love my college graduates. Some of y'all are so smart, some of you are stupid. You don't even know how to compare apples to apples, because if you were comparing the corporate papers to a college degree, the corporate papers is a much better deal. Because essentially, you're gonna learn how to set up your corporate entity. I saw another comment, $5,000 to learn how to set up LLCs. Once again, you guys are intellectually midgets, intellectually deficient. I am not charging money to learn to teach you how to set up an LLC. I am teaching that how to set up holding company, teaching you that how to set up an operating company, teaching you that how to set up a business, teaching you sales, marketing, management, hiring, and branding. See, it's a little different when I spell it out like that, but to you mental midgets who are, and I'm just gonna keep it a buck here on these internet streets, who are jealous that I have enough money to pay cash money for all these cars. You're jealous I live in a million dollar house. You're jealous I drive a Porsche. And you just can't figure it out. Someone said, I got lucky that the storage auction shows came on. Really? So me getting in the storage auction business 10 years before the storage auction shows were ever even thought of, actually 12, 12 years, I, that's luck. That's like you going to work every day and being lucky to get a paycheck every two weeks. That's, that's kind of how that is. But what we're going to do, because I'm going to renew my vow. You know, I put this out a while ago. I haven't talked about it in a minute. But I want to create 50,000 corporate citizens. Now, what is a corporate citizen? A corporate citizen is someone who owns companies, plural. You don't own one company, you own companies. You have your own mini conglomerate. And through owning these companies, I wanna create an income basis of $250,000 a year for you. Now, why 250,000? My life changed at 250. I didn't have to become a millionaire. I didn't have to make all this money. 
you're currently making, I'm going to say, based upon national income averages, you're bringing home, let's talk about that, you're bringing home to the $4,000 a month, when most people bring home about two to $2,500. That's where the majority of America is. So for you to go from that to $20,000 a month, that's a game changer. That's a game changer. Let me go to, let me explain to you what can happen. First of all, living, you can live in a nice neighborhood. You, if you want to live in an apartment, you can live in a very nice apartment. You can live in a very nice house. Number two, you can drive pretty much whatever you want. Number three, if you have children, and this is really important because the environment that your children grows up in sets the stage for the rest of their life. So you can have a nice house in a nice neighborhood and send your children to private school if you want to. Essentially, what this will do, and I said essentially, 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 because some of y'all find that funny that I use the word essentially a lot. Hey, it's my, it's my bag, it's my gig. You do a YouTube channel and let me make fun of you. Oh, that's right, you're too lazy. Um, essentially, there it is again, you will create a life of intent and design. Let's say you're a young man and your name is Maurice. And Maurice, you're 22 years old. You're coming across this channel. I have a lot of college students in the corporate papers. Very interesting. And you come across the corporate papers and you go through the program. You go through the program. And from the ages 22 to 27, let's say it takes you five years. You build out your corporate citizen membership, you build out your companies, and you get to that $250,000 a year. At the age of 27, you know what? First of all, your dating options exponentially expand. You can date whoever, you can date doctors, you can date attorneys, you can date whatever you want. Because typically what you will find as your financial abilities improve, so will your appetites. You're not gonna wanna date a regular chick once you become a high-flying corporate citizen. You're gonna date someone who's doing something. You know, she may not have nowhere near the money you have, but she's doing something, and that's going to set the stage because as a corporate citizen, at the age of 27, making 250, you can be in the position to get married, provide for a family, and have a family grow up in an upper middle class to rich lifestyle. That is huge. That is huge. Because once you become a corporate citizen and you go ahead and stamp your corporate citizen badge membership and get your business up to 250, you, for every corporate citizen I create, I estimate this will impact 25 to 100 people. Let me say this again. Why? Because as a corporate citizen, you will be starting multiple businesses. You will be hiring employees. So let's say there's you, you go ahead, you get married, you, your wife's name is Susie Maurice, you marry Susie and y'all have three kids. That's impacting four people. Then your main company has 25 employees. That's impacting 29 people. And then your additional companies have five and 10 employees. So one corporate citizen is going to impact 25 to 100 people. You're gonna provide jobs, you're gonna provide income, you're gonna provide purpose. It's very, very deep. And the passive income program, which you know, it always starts off as me helping out a friend. And my friend Dina, who I convinced not to sell her business to hire someone, was the first participant in the passive income program. I just be doing stuff, you know, I don't really sit down and go like, well, I'm gonna think I'm gonna create a course. But I know for a fact, because this is one of the things we're gonna do, the average small business income is 71,000 because it's a single person business. I'm gonna teach you how to hire and build out teams. That by itself is the value of this program. 
That by itself is the value of this program because so many business owners do not know how to hire. They don't know how to train. They don't know how to create corporate culture and see what we're going to go through with the, you know, once again, it's step by step. Go ahead, get in. Don't wait until the price goes up. You're wasting time. Go ahead, get in now. What we're going to do is first we're setting our goals. Then we're going to create our holding company. Then we're going to create our operating company. And essentially the way the course is set up is we do this first, we do this second, we do this third. It's a logical, sensible progression versus just waking up and doing stuff. Now, this Sunday, we're going to get into your operating companies and we're going to get into the passive income program. Now, the first thing you have to do is to get your first operating company up and running. We're not going to start three, four, five companies at the same time. I have ideals. Like once I get my rental car company where I want to be, I'm going to start another company. And I'm going to talk about that in the corporate papers. So you will get to see real business in real time, real activity, real business credit, real business banking, real business sales, real business strategies. And let's talk about the strategies. I am currently working on a Turo strategy that has worked out quite well, is worked out really, really well. And once I get scale with that, and this will be in the car rental course, no one is doing this stuff. I've watched Turo videos and they're going completely in the opposite direction because none of these guys have ever started a business. Turo is pretty much a template business. You have Turo, you have a car, you stick your car on Turo, Turo does the marketing, Turo finds the customers for you. I've had to do all of that. And since I've had to do that, that gives me an edge. It gives me a, quite an advantage because I know how to get customers and I know how to get repeat business, which if you know anything about business, Google getting the value of repeat business and you will see how massively important that is when you can get someone like you get a customer who spends with you instead of buying from you one time, they buy from you 12 times. That's huge. That's huge. And I'm going to teach you how to do that because I'm getting ready. I'm starting to do that with Turo. I've had people rent my, you know, one gentleman has rented the Mercedes four times. So I'm starting to get repeat customers, which is huge in business. And none of these other uh, guys, because someone keeps talking to me about Pushman Mitch talking about wrecking your car is a payday. And this person doesn't run a car rental business. So he's just sharing what, let's see, what, what's the term of it is? Hearsay. Hearsay is stuff that you don't have first party accounts on. He was doing hearsay. He was like, he breaks it down and I was like, are you doing this? And he says, no. See, right now I'm in the middle of not one, not two, but three claims. I have not even gotten my first check. These are not paydays. Let me go ahead and give you the claims process from an active car rental business owner. First of all, they're going to make you submit this information two, three times. Then they're going to want to send out their adjuster. You cannot take it to Ed's collision shop and have Ed draw up an estimate of $10,000 and submit that to them and they're going to pay it. That ain't going to work. So I don't know what Pushman Mitch is talking about, but I do know as a car rental business, as someone who's currently and actively doing it, when someone wrecks your car, that is not a payday. That is not a payday. And this is one of the reasons I'm having this conversation with you. A lot of you guys are in the hearsay phase. You're not participants. You're not technicians. You're not actively, because someone comes on Instagram or they have a nice little show and they sit there and they like him 500. Shout out to my boy JT Pocket Watchers. He made, he made him 500 do a reversal on some stuff he put out because him, 
Him 500 was teaching you how to do credit credit fraud. So I guarantee you, I don't know Pushman Mitch, really don't watch his content, but I can guarantee you when someone wrecks your car on Turo or wrecks your car on Hire Car, I have not had any damage claims for Turo, so I don't know how that process works, but typically it is not a payday. It is a hassle, it is a pain in the butt, unless you got that car. Like, I can, I can tell you how it would be a payday. Let's say you had a Tesla Model X, and you were able to, the Tesla Model X, I think they go for 120, and you were able to get that Tesla for 60,000. And then they, a renter totaled out your Tesla. You only paid 60, and then Turo pays you out 100K. At that point, yeah, that's a payday. Now, how many of you think you can get a Tesla or any car for 50% off in the current car buying market? You will be good to do get a car at 20% off. That would be good. That would be good. So you're not, I mean, so that's what you got to do to turn a wreck into a payday. So this is a very important area that I'm talking about because I want you guys to become practitioners and technicians. I've had some friends who were watching some YouTube videos and I said, like, hey, do me a favor and try to do what they say to do in these videos. And every one of them came back and it was like, they left out so much. They left out so much. And you know, I ain't hating on rich, our rich journey. I'm stating the fact that they did not retire in eight years. It is a statistical and factual fact that they retired in 18 or 20 years. That ain't hate. That's bringing up a, a very important piece of information because retiring in 20 years is still really good, but it doesn't sound as good as we retired in eight years. There, that's, that, that's some very loose language that they're using. And I'm gonna keep talking about them and anyone else that comes out and talks about uh, we're retired in this ridiculously compressed time limit and they leave out the point when they entered the workforce. It's like, hey, we're gonna start doing fire and we're gonna retire 10 years from now. We're gonna for completely forget all this other time that we're in the workplace. We're not gonna include that. That's, they're basically lying to you, basically. Which brings me to the passive income program. I know it works because I've benefited from it and my friend Dina has benefited from it. So what we're gonna do once we, you know, it's gonna take you two to five years. Two to five years, two to five years. It's gonna take you two to five years, two to five years. I understand that there are people on the internet, uh, Andre Jack, his YouTube channel made him almost a million dollars in one year. Andre Jack was exceptional. He had an exceptional situation. Graham Stephens is exceptional. There's like 30 million YouTube channels and there's only like 200,000 channels, the top 1% of YouTube channels. Both of my YouTube channels are in the top 1% of YouTube channels, both of them. This one has 103,000, the other one has 41,000 subscribers, and they're in that top 1%. The top 1% makes 95% of the YouTube money. So, you know, I, I was having a conversation with someone who was like, you know, starting the YouTube, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know you're looking at a two to three year journey. What? Yeah, once you start making videos, you have to become monetized. And he, he was completely blown away because everyone thinks that they could just Pick up a camera. Hey, it's your boy Gigi. What's going on? And just talk a whole bunch of nonsense to get a bunch of views. Uh, it, it don't work like that. It don't work like that. So, um, for you to come online and start making money, massive money, and I'm gonna say massive money is six figures, 100K a year, within a year, is exceptional. It ain't the norm. There's 1 billion Instagram accounts and the top 1% makes 99% of the money. 
That means the mass majority of Instagram accounts are making not a dime. So hear me and hear me well. You might be one of those fortunate, lucky individuals that can come online and start making big money quickly. I actually was one. I started this YouTube channel August 6, 2009. In October, I was making five, 600 bucks a month. Pretty quick. In my first year, I made 64,000. It's pretty quick, but I'm a seasoned business operator. You know why I was successful with YouTube? First of all, I did not try to go for YouTube. You know, back then they had the YouTube partnership program where you could get money. This, you, this channel wasn't monetized for the first 16 months, but I made over 100K from this channel in the first 16 months, and it wasn't monetized. So this led me to create products and services versus sitting around waiting for YouTube money. And my YouTube money compared to my um, online business money is peanuts. Uh, a bad month, I'll make 5,000. A really good month, I'll make 10,000. That's my YouTube money between two channels. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of it. I mean, you know, from YouTube. So this whole thing that you're going to come on social media and you start making this money and start killing it. It is very exceptional to come to YouTube or Instagram and immediately blow up. That ain't normal. That's exceptional. Just like when I did the talk about the billionaires, there's only 260, 260 families of people with multiple billions. And after that, it comes down to we're worth 1.5 billion. We're worth two point. There's only 250. And someone kind of challenged me. It's like, you need to study history if you think these people were exceptional. Cornelius Vanderbilt was exceptional. JP Mellon was exceptional. These were exceptional people. I know y'all hate to hear that because I am Peeing, skeet, skeet, skeet all over your dreams of you just blowing up, blowing up without being exceptional. I'm exceptional. My CPA told me I was exceptional. She said, I don't have too many business owners who can pay themselves $360,000 a year from their business. She said, that's exceptional. I'm actually Filing, I'm going to show you my pay stubs. I am actually paying taxes on $360, $360,000. She said that was exceptional. She says I am one of her wealthiest business clients. And she has a lot of us. So I'm exceptional. And this is why the moist men be coming in. Look, man, you got lucky, man. You, 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 you. If it wasn't for the YouTube channel, if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for, oh, oh, my. Moist, moistness, moistness, moistness. I'm exceptional. For me to create a business that was paying me fifty to seventy thousand dollars a month after I was recovering from my heart attack is exceptional. I wasn't working, I wasn't doing nothing. I was just puttering around the house playing with the dog. That's what I was doing. That's what I was doing. So understand you're getting exceptional source, exceptional game from someone who's actually doing the game. I'm actually doing this in real life. This is not theory. This isn't like Cat Theo, you can do this, you can do this, you can, and she got a, a job. I mean, come on, man, come on. This is one of the things. YouTube is personality driven versus actionable results driven. Let me say this again. YouTube is personality driven versus results driven. If you have a really good personality, if you're moderately to downright, like there's a trucking channel, Angelica Larson. The chick is absolutely gorgeous. And she just comes up and makes a video of doing regular mundane things, but because she's gorgeous and has a really nice body, 
Her channel is at 300, almost 400,000 subscribers. And she's, just, hey guys, I drive this truck. This is how you back. She ain't doing nothing exceptional. It's because she's a trucker and she's pretty. It's her personality. I mean, she sounds like a really nice person. You know, she sounds like she would be cool to hang out with. That's what's driving her channel. She ain't doing nothing earth shattering. She's not dropping any sauce. So YouTube is a personality driven platform. Graham Stephan, he looks like the kid next door, the college student, he looks like your little brother. Nothing that he says is exceptional. He actually lies quite a bit. He does a lot of quick bait titles. He's a personality. He's a YouTube personality. Graham Stephan, I think he started a coffee business. I, I will do some investigations into that, but I guarantee you, they will not be as successful as this YouTube channel because when you get into off YouTube and get into the real marketplace, you got to actually know how to operate a business because the YouTube channel will help. It will help with the coffee business, but you're going to be dealing with other coffee brands and you're going to be dealing with brands that are deeply entrenched in the coffee business and all they do is coffee and they, they know every trick in the book and you're gonna be competing with them and they're gonna eat your lunch. They're gonna eat your lunch, Graham. I, I, I'm gonna do a little research into that because coffee is a multi-billion dollar per day industry. It is not for the faint of heart. So I'm gonna give you exceptional game and it's my promise that you go through the corporate papers you spend a year, because it's gonna take you a year, because you, there's so many things you have to learn, that once you get through the program, get your businesses, and this can be any business. It can be a t-shirt business. It can be a cleaning service. It can be a trucking company. It can be, it can be any business. And once you go ahead, because the real source, the real game is hiring, managing, and building teams. That's where you're gonna make the money. Because, you know, setting up the corporation is important, but that's really not the super value. The value is creating a business, creating a corporate culture, and building a team. That's where the money comes in. And that's where you get free. Uh, August 1st, not August 1st, September 1st, that's going to be the beginning of my first calendar year for the car rental business. So I spent... May, June, July, August, testing, getting my own marketplace data. I'm gonna teach you guys how to get marketplace data. And typically watching YouTube videos is not gonna get you marketplace data. You're gonna to have to get in the market and get exposed to the customer and then see what the customer likes and what the customer doesn't like. And then start giving the customer what they like. When you give the customer what they like, this is what you get. This is what you get. When you get a customer what they like, this is what you get. So um, I got very frustrated watching YouTube videos and stuff and listening to people. And I was like, you know what? Just buy some cars, create your own data sets. I am so glad I did that because one of the things I discovered is, you know, many people will tell you who have assumptions and these aren't bad people. They're not stupid. From, you know, as a person on the outside who isn't in the car rental business, it makes sense to go out and buy Hondas, uh, Toyotas, these good practical cars. That makes sense. That's a really valid assumption. All right. I got into the marketplace and I realized these people don't want to drive these cars. They will drive them if they're cheap enough. But they really don't want to drive them. And I learned because I went out and, you know, I bought four cars for hire car, Acura, Camrys, Acras and Toyotas. And I bought four cars for Turo, Porsche, Range Rover, BMW. And my cars just sat on Turo. They did not rent well. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to sell these cars. And in the meantime, I'm going to put these cars on Turo. I mean, hire car. Just to you know, get what I can get until I get the title and then I can trade them and sell out of them. Boom! All those cars were in it. I, put those, I remember Friday night I put those cars on hire car, Saturday morning they were gone. I was like, what? 
I got someone that just booked a Mercedes for a two week rental at $150 per day on hire car. That car has been moving consistently on Turo, but I've not had anyone do a week long or two week long rental on uh, Turo. So I have learned because I created my own data sets and we're going to talk about this in depth. I've learned some stuff that no one else knows because they're going by common assumptions. I could go out and buy a BMW on Tuesday, put it on the platform Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, that sucker will be gone. I currently have two uh, Acras just kind of sitting and I'm about to create another plan to get those bad boys moving because I figured out some other stuff last night. So we're going to see how that goes over the next few days. But I'm going to teach you how to get your own data set. Your own data set, this is, this is, this is how you get the money. Data sets, holding companies. I am the only one on the YouTube that's consistently talking about holding companies. And I saw that the videos did really, really well. And I created the corporate toolbox, my most successful course to date. And now I am following up with the corporate papers based upon marketplace data not guessing, not assuming. It's like, oh, this is what they like. This is what they like. I'm going to give them. What, what did I say? When you give the marketplace what it wants, this is what the marketplace gives you. I am the only one that is teaching you Fortune 500 corporate game at this level. I am the only one. I am the only one on YouTube talking about this. For now, at some point, there will be some other people who will come. When they see how much money I'm making, they will come. They're like, whoa, let's do this. Because with a holding company, because I have a holding company structure and many people are like looking at, when I show my pay stub, I'm paying $10,000 a month in taxes, right? And people are like, whoa, 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 dude! I thought the whole game was not to pay taxes. See, I'm playing the game to win. Because I have a holding company, guys, I'm looking at getting a forty to fifty thousand dollar refund, so my overall tax base is about to go down dramatically. At the end of the year, um, I'm on track to pay one hundred and thirty, thirty, hundred thirty thousand dollars in taxes. So I get a fifty, I get a forty or fifty thousand dollar tax refund back. That brings me down to eighty thousand dollars or seventy thousand. So I'm playing the game. I'm going to teach you how to play the game. And you, you got to pay taxes. You want to know why you got to pay taxes? If you want funding. No one's going to give you a loan based upon your gross and you've deducted everything. They're going to be like, ha, 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 sorry, Mr. Uh, Jones, we can't give you no money. I'm going to teach you how to play the game. I'm going to teach you how to play the game. Teach you how to play the game. I am excited to be filing taxes this year. You know, I've never gotten a refund check that bit. I've used other corporate strategies. But now, um, because the money has gotten so nice, uh, I have to do the ploy these strategies. So I'm going to be able to get me a huge refund check. Huge. And I'm going to teach you how to do that. So guys, go ahead, get into the corporate paper, sign up today, and be ready for the training tomorrow, 5 p.m. I got my email list together, so everyone should be updated. You should get your um, entry code. Go below, get in the corporate papers today, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a good day, and let's go make some money. Let's go make some money, man. Let's make some money. Let's make this money. All right, I'm out.